father's championship boxing belt since he was in grade 9. In 1997, his search for the missing championship belt was featured on the CBC Evening News. Downey appealed for help from anybody who might know something about where that belt could be. There was also a big write-up in the newspaper. Well, shortly after here and now last night, Norm's phone rang and the woman on the other end had some stunning news. And today, that woman met up with Norm and Norm's dad at the place where Norm works and our cameras were there. Dad, this hey. man started it all off. He's the troublemaker. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you Congratulations. very much, Anthony. Uh, after 60 years, not bad. It's amazing, eh? This is the lady that started all this. She said this morning that um, she promised her husband she'll find the owner and she failed. I found her, but I think we found each other. Okay. She, um, she held on to this in safekeeping. God love you. Thank you very much. Oh. On behalf of the whole family, oh, thank you so very much. I'm so happy to have had it. I screeched like a baby last night. So if you guys are ready, I got something to show you. The moment that you've been waiting for. Look. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I've done the same thing last night, Dad. Well, this is quite the event. Norm, what's happened in the last 24 hours? Oh, it started off my birthday last, uh, yesterday, and 50th. I never, never expected 50th to be this. My wife spoiled me during the day. We went out for supper, and I got a, a text from this fine young lady uh, saying, please call me. All right. And so you, you got him to call you. What was the phone conversation like? Um... I, I, I said to him, uh, he said, I'm Norm. I said, well, I'm Pauline, and um, uh, I have something that belongs to you. And I think he said, what's that? And then I said, well, I'm holding in my hands your, your grandfather's boxing belt. Right. So that's and your... he started to cry. Yeah. That's your dad's belt. Uh, are you happy? Oh, I'm very, very happy. That's quite a 50th birthday for you. Oh, I can't wait for the 75th. I really can't. <laughs> um, so it... what did you tell Pauline? I, I, when I called originally, I just said, hi, this is Norm. I was expecting it was a customer, and I said, uh, this is Norm calling. You call me? She said, yes, and what she just said. And I said, do you realize this is my birthday? And she said, no. She said, well, I got a good birthday gift for you. And I said, where are you to? And she said, I'm in St. John's. I said, so am I. And she said, if we can go out and meet for supper, or you can come here, or whatever. I said, I don't care. Where can we meet? So when we through the jigs and reels, I finally said, okay, I'll meet you. I'll go down to your house. And myself and Gail left, and we picked up my brother and sister-in-law, and we basically ran down to the east end uh, to pick up this tr treasure. Right. Mm -hmm. How'd you feel when you saw it? Uh, just like Dad's reaction. I kissed it and I screeched and bawled. And they called me a downy for a reason because we're so soft-hearted and I, I just couldn't believe it. And here it is, 2018, and thanks to you. How'd you get it? Um, my husband inherited a lot of the family tree stuff from his family and in the box with all the photographs, pictures, memorabilia, was this beautiful thing. Um, I did ask my brother-in-law about it, and he said, well, hang on to it, keep it with the, keep it all with it, with together with the family tree stuff, maybe it's a family member. And I did look for years to try and find the owner, but I just, just couldn't find it. And you made a promise about that, right? I promised my husband that I would find out who it rightly belonged to, but he died before he knows this, so uh, perhaps he knows, who knows. When you were watching Here and Now last night, what, what happened? What, what went through your head? I only caught the tail end. It was a good I, thing? Yeah. And I was just, I was so excited. I, was, I shook. I called my daughter. She came rushing up. She said, Mom, what is wrong? I stuttered it all out all over the place. And then uh, we ran to the computer, checked the Facebook, and, and saw that there was a guy working at Hyundai and just called him. Right. And we were so happy. I've never been happier in my life that something like so precious as this is back to where it belongs. Well, listen, it's an amazing story. Uh, I'm glad that it has this kind of ending. And of course, I want to thank Hyundai for letting us come to your place of work and have everybody here appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You oh, better not squish it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Such a great story. Well, 41 teams and 82 racers set out on a grueling journey this afternoon when Kane's Quest got underway. The riders are now in the first leg of the 3,200 kilometer endurance race. Jacob Barker is la in Labrador City where they began their trek. So Jacob, how was it? Well, 
in America, they have the uh, Super Bowl in Canada, they have the Stanley Cup, but here in Labrador, we have Kane's Quest, and the riders that sped away today, they got a hero's send-off. At the start line, that's the time to gun it. The teams went out in intervals. While they waited, they were getting pumped up. Oh, I'm pretty excited right now. <laughs> I can't wait. Knowing the challenge ahead of them, they were shaking off the nerves. I'm, uh, I'm itching gold, it's just like everyone else. Is. Yeah. yeah, once we start going, I think it'll be fine. Some for the first time. First leg's gonna be a big learning curve. Just take it in, ride, you know, we got some strengths, we got some weaknesses, so we're just gonna take advantage of it. I think a good solid ride to Churchill Falls will be healthy. A warm weather start, great for the show, but not so much for the riding. Pros and cons, we're gonna be soaked in the first half hour, so that's not gonna be so comfortable, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah. Big representation from the Inu racers and their supporters. Eight teams, they hope for one of their own to be crossing the finish line first. It's also a first for Team Salt. Their fan base is growing. Are, are you a little bit of rock stars where you come from? Uh, yeah, they're, they're, we, our, our Facebook page is growing like, like, like nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think there's all that support? Uh, I think we're, uh, because of, we're the first crease to run this race. At Menahek High School, right next door, classes were in session, but it didn't look like they were getting much done. And for the crowd that was on the sidelines, this is what they live for. It's Labrador big race, we can't wait. We wait for this every two years. Let's go, let's go, Cave Quest, woo! I hope they all ride safe. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. They're all winners. Well, there was unfortunately one team that's had problems already, Team 99. They're being towed back to Labrador City, but they're still in the race. They can still head back out. As for the rest of them, they're on their way to Churchill Falls, about 250 kilometers here. That's the first leg of the race. There they'll have a 12-hour uh, wait, uh, but on the way and after that, what can they expect weather-wise, Caroline? Well, uh, Jacob, they can expect more of the same, unfortunately. I know everyone's hoping for those really cold temperatures, but actually temperatures are going to be sticking around the freezing mark all weekend long. So let's have a look at the temperatures in the province right now. You can see that Western Labrador is actually the coldest spot in the province at the moment. We're looking at temperatures around the freezing mark mostly everywhere. Even Stephenville here still sitting at four degrees. St. John's just went under the zero mark just a short time ago, and we do have this freezing drizzle advisory in effect for tonight and that's thanks to this northeasterly flow that's going to be sticking around for a while. You can see the whole northeast coast of the island right from Cape Royal up through uh, Port Hope Simpson. Freezing rain tonight. Chance that things could get pretty icy and here's a snapshot of what your weekend is looking like. You can see in Labrador those temperatures at zero or above. Chance of flurries there. In the east we're looking at some fairly mild temperatures as well. Well, three degrees tomorrow in St. John's. Those uh, the drizzle should clear off in the morning and we're looking at uh, mostly cloudy skies. But just check out the West Coast Corner Brook. A mix of sun and cloud temperatures six degrees on Saturday, five degrees on Sunday. Not uh, too wintry there at all, Debbie. Thanks, Carol. Not very wintry temperatures at all on the West Coast, where in just over a week, hundreds of athletes will descend on Deer Lake for the Newfoundland and Labrador Winter Games. West Coast organizers are busy prepping for the major event. Here and now's Colleen Connors has more. It seems empty right now, but in just over a week from now, this stadium is going to be packed with over 2,000 people for the opening ceremonies of the Newfoundland and Labrador Winter Games. Now, close to 1,600 athletes from all across the province will be landing here next Saturday. Posters are ready to go up. Plans and schedules are in place. We're a rather small committee, and we've only been working together a short time. Normally, uh, communities have four years. We're doing it less than a year, but we're very excited because it's hard to believe that next week we'll be standing here and preparations will be uh, getting ready for the opening ceremonies. 600 athletes from all over the province will arrive Saturday and stay here at the Athletes' Village. Then, halfway through the week, almost another 700 will come and compete. 
it's going to be a busy spot. And as soon as the opening ceremonies are over next Saturday night, we had to be ready to start playing hockey here in this arena at uh, 8 o'clock the next morning. It's a special thing for Pinkson to hold the games in his hometown. He coached bowling in the last games. But now my focus is to make sure, and our committee, we've been committed to this, is make sure the athletes have an experience that they remember the rest of their lives. I mean, I reflected back in 1986, I was in Cornerbrook, actually for Winter Games as an athlete. So you're going through the three different stages, so it's very exciting for me to be able to be a part of that in my lifetime. Venues all over the West Coast are gearing up for hockey, curling, skiing, volleyball, even table tennis. Now all they're waiting on is the athletes. And the city will keep prepping all next week, getting ready for those close to 1600 athletes that will land here next Saturday, just in time for the opening ceremonies Saturday night right here at 630. Colleen Connors, CBC News, Deer Lake. To Conception Bay South now, where people in the area are going to have to find another place to swim for at least three months. The town says the heating and ventilation system at its recreation complex has to be replaced, so the pool will shut down while that work is done. Refunds are being offered to people who signed up for lessons, parties, and other classes. Police in Regina are searching for a missing Inu boy from this province. 14-year-old Donnie Rich was last seen in Regina Tuesday morning. He's about 5 feet 4 inches tall, 140 pounds, with short black hair and brown eyes. He was last seen wearing a black sweatshirt, black pants, and a maroon toque. There's no evidence to suggest that Rich is in danger, but police say they need to ensure he's safe. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to contact the Regina Police Service. The case of RNC Constable Carl Douglas Snellgrove is now with the Court of Appeal in St. John's. The Crown is appealing the jury's not guilty verdict last year on a charge of sexual assault. The Crown says Snellgrove should face a new trial because the judge at his original trial didn't give proper instructions to the jury. A large part of the argument hinges on the fact Snellgrove was in uniform, on duty, and he used his police cruiser to drive the woman home. She was intoxicated at the time. At trial, she told the court she felt safe because he was a police officer. The Crown says those facts remove any consent because Snellgrove was in a position of trust, power, and authority. Snellgrove's lawyer says he didn't in any way use his position to get the woman to have sex with him and that she initiated the sex. No date was set for the Court of Appeal to give its decision. Well, we'd like to share a view with you now, typically reserved for the birds. <laughs> Tracked Consulting, the firm that designed the Bannerman Park Loop here in St. John's, is sharing some pretty spectacular drone footage. Now keep your eyes peeled. Maybe you'll spot someone that you actually know.
Welcome back. Thousands of people who identify as Mi'kmaq in Newfoundland are losing their indigenous status. Some are fighting in the courts. It's been a decades long battle that is literally dividing families and communities. Chris O'Neill Yates has more. Those tree right here have been denied and those tree have been accepted. In a single photo, Mi'kmaq elder Calvin White illustrates how the struggle to get status for Newfoundland Mi'kmaq has gone wrong. Three of his children are considered indigenous and three are not. They grew up here in Flat Bay, they were educated here in Flat Bay, but for employment opportunities they had to move elsewhere. The Halibu First Station was created in 2011. Some 26,000 members are scattered across Newfoundland. But when the process of getting recognition from Ottawa began in 2008, more than 100,000 people applied for status. That's 20% of the entire population of Newfoundland. Did you think that there were 100,000 members of the Halapu Nation here in, in Newfoundland? Never in my wildest dreams, and I still don't think there's 100,000 people here in Newfoundland. Some good old moose too. White says the recognition process for true Mi'kmaq has been thwarted with an influx of 75,000 unexpected applications. If you can get on this registration list, uh, you know, you can, you can buy big ticket items and uh, you'll get the taxes saved off them and, uh, you know, and you'll also get uh, education uh, money for, for your children to go to school and there's, uh, there's um, you know, there's health care there like glasses and teeth and these type of things. To deal with all of these applicants, the Halibu First Nation and Ottawa revamped the process. Proof of residency and connection to the community became part of a new, complicated set of criteria. How many times did you phone home? How many times did you travel to Newfoundland? Uh, do you live how many times you went berry picking? Do you live uh, an Aboriginal way of life? Uh, you know, all of these things is what came into play, which has absolutely nothing to do with whatsoever of who you are. The discontent of thousands of Halibu Mi'kmaq is directed at Brendan Mitchell, their chief. I'm not going to sit here and tell you 103,000 people should be in this band. This was a younger picture of, of Matty Mitchell. Most Newfoundlanders would have learned about his legendary great-grandfather, Matty Mitchell, in their history books. A prospector, guide and explorer who discovered a huge ore body in central Newfoundland. But bloodline isn't all Mitchell inherited. Strife, families upset. Families are broken, communities upset, tremendous amount of, of hurt. We have a case where twins in the same household, one is in and one is out. These are things that we're trying to find reasons or answers to. Mitchell too disagrees with the new criteria, such as proof of practicing a Mi'kmaq way of life. They may be practicing their culture every day, but they haven't got a picture of themselves, a selfie saying, look at me, I'm." I'm smudging, or, or look at me, I'm, uh, I'm passing the, the pipe. You know, I, I just went to a powwow, look at me. I always had a fear that there would be an infiltration of a part of society. It was my fear in the 70s, it was my fear through the 80s and the 90s, and now it's becoming a reality. A reality that threatens the very movement that White and others started all those decades ago. Chris O'Neill Yates, CBC News, Flat Bay, Newfoundland. Uh, it's absolutely incredible, it really is. I mean, we're so excited. Team Smith will soon be hurrying hard. Meet the home team competing at the Canadian Men's Briar. Coming up.
Next Weather Forecast has been brought to you by Newfoundland and Labrador Tourism. 5,000 kilometers of groomed trails are waiting to be explored. Embrace winter today. back everyone as you can see Carolyn is in for mm -hmm. Ryan this evening mm -hmm. nice to have you here Thanks. Uh, pretty nice day today I was looking at the sunshine through the window much of that on the go tomorrow. Yeah, you know, it was it was quite a nice day. It was mostly cloudy. We saw those little, you know, peaks of the sunshine coming through and tomorrow is going to be pretty much the same sort of story in the east, but it's going to get messy before we get that nice weather. <laughs> Let's have a look at uh, your weather on the way headlines. We have uh, some lingering patchy drizzle that's moving in and that's going to stick around thanks to this northeasterly flow that's going to be hanging around the province for a while. Could even be here for for the next week or so. Uh, we do have those mild temperatures on the west coast tomorrow, looking like a great weekend uh, for the west and some scattered flurries in through Labrador on the weekend. This is the freezing drizzle advisory that's in effect for tonight, right from C Cape Royal, right up through uh, into central areas of the province. So we're gonna have an alternate, it's gonna alternate between you know the regular drizzle and the freezing drizzle. So it could make for some pretty icy uh, conditions overnight tonight so you can see goes right up through to uh, Port Hope Simpson Labrador and here's a look at the lows this evening all hovering around the freezing mark so that's why we're going to get that alternating between drizzle and freezing drizzle in through Labrador temperatures uh, cooler in western Labrador minus 10 as uh, the low tonight with a chance of flurries but things are going to warm up tomorrow which I know is bad news for all of those folks taking part in the Canes quest so you can see those flurries in through Western Labrador will start to dissipate overnight tonight and tomorrow we're looking at a largely cloudy day for most of the province. Some flurries in through uh, the northeastern parts of the island with some uh, drizzle there that should clear off by morning. You can see the cloud cover over the island by uh, Saturday afternoon, but temperatures are going to be quite nice. If you're in St. John's, you'll be waking up to that freezing drizzle. Temperatures around zero. It's going to be kind of breezy. Northeasterly winds gusting up to 50 by the afternoon that drizzle should clear away and we're in for another mostly cloudy day we could see a little touch of sunshine throughout the day as well and into the evening those conditions will continue with overcast skies so as for the rest of uh, the province, nice temperatures here in southern uh, Avalon there. Placentia, 5 degrees with a mix of sun and cloud tomorrow. Chance of some flurries in Marystown tomorrow. In through central areas of the province, you can see temperatures are still above zero pretty much everywhere uh, tomorrow. There's the drizzle that we're expecting in the morning, but it should clear off as well into the afternoon, looking at a mostly cloudy day for central areas. The west coast looking gorgeous, a mix of sun and cloud. Temperatures six degrees gonna be breezy though on the west coast gusts up to 60 Burgio is going to be very breezy tomorrow gusts up to 80 along the coast there as we move up to uh, southeastern Labrador chance of flurries there for Mary's Harbor St. Anthony temperatures still fairly mild though and for the rest of Labrador Lab City looking at uh, zero tomorrow with a chance of flurries throughout the day. And you can see it's still above zero for all of Labrador tomorrow. Chance of flurries in Nain. And as we go into Sunday, we're looking at another very similar day. Lots of cloud cover, a chance of some flurries and drizzle overnight, but it should clear off fairly nicely on Sunday. Debbie. Thanks, Carolyn. Brooms sweeping and hurrying hard. There'll be lots of that over the next 10 days at the Canadian Men's Briar in Regina. And this year, Newfoundland and Labrador will be represented by Team Smith. The young team led by Greg Smith is from the St. John's Curling Club and was thrilled to win the Provincials last month. It's the first time since 2006 that another team besides Brad Guju is representing the province at the Briar. Guju is at the Briar, but is Team Canada. Who can forget how they won last year's Briar at home in stunning fashion? And I've reached Team Smith in Regina. So, uh, Skip uh, Greg Smith, first of all, introduce us to the team. Hi, I'm Greg Smith, Skip for Team Newfoundland and Labrador. Oh, <laughs> Matthew Hunt. I'm, I'm the third. Uh, lead, Ian Withygum. Second, Andrew Taylor. So how's it going there? You're feeling pretty good? 
It's going incredible. Uh, we're starting hot shots here now. Uh, we had our pre-tournament practice this morning, and we're just getting geared up for our game tomorrow night, 9.30 Newfoundland time versus Team Northwest Territories. So Greg, some of you have curled on the national stage as junior and university curlers, but how are you feeling on the eve of the briar? Uh, it's absolutely incredible, it really is. I mean, we're so excited um, and we're just taking it as if it was a league game back in St. John's, but we just got to play the best that we can and there's 6,500 people watching that league game. <laughs> Only that many thousand, hey? Have you got any <laughs> strategies for keeping calm? I understand you're chewing a lot of gum. I chew a ton of gum. It's, uh, it's certainly helping me. I think for the rest of us is we just, you know, keep a level head uh, and just treat it as if it was something that we'd be playing back home uh, and, you know, just take it one rock at a time and one end at a time and, you know, stay in the process. Now, you guys have never played Brad Guju and his rink. Uh, you will get to do that at the Briar. Do you guys have any tricks up your sleeve to give him a run for his money? Uh, there's no tricks that we have. We're just going to have to play lights out. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a fantastic game regardless of the outcome. Really looking forward to it. Now, I understand uh, that Brad gave you his broom when you were just a little boy. What was that about? Yeah, when I was, um, I think maybe 11, this was 10 years ago, he gave me his broom uh, after a slam event, and I never ever imagined I'd be playing him at the Briar 10 years later. It's kind of it's kind of wild. Perhaps it'll bring you a little bit of luck. Uh, yes, you totally. So, Greg, when is your team's first game? And uh, just remind us again who you're playing. Uh, our first game is 9.30 Newfoundland time tomorrow night versus Team Northwest Territories and Jamie Cooey. So that's Kevin Cooey's brother. It and he's is. Gonna be, uh, going to give you a good game, I think. Oh, definitely. It's going to be a great game in our opener. So what do you think, Greg, it will be like for you and the guys the very first time tomorrow night in that game against the Northwest Territories when you get in the hack? Uh, I think the first rock for each of us is going to be a little bit stressful. We're probably going to be a little bit tense. Uh, so that first end, I'm probably going to call it a bit more wide open. But I think after that, we're just going to get into the groove and just uh, treat it like the same. You know, it's... Uh, it's going to be a little bit nervous at first, but we'll get we'll get it all under control. You know, you're all wished the best of luck from everybody back here. Enjoy the experience. We'll be watching. Thank you so much. So, Greg Smith, I was uh, asking him about the gum. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he brought 400 pieces of gum <laughs> with him. It just really, really calms his nerves. So, it's a wonderful experience yeah, for them absolutely. to finally make it to the briar and like that. I, true, and I think compared to St. John's last year, if you talk about one of the meccas of curling, Regina, it's going to be rocking in there. They're going to mm -hmm. have a, a great, great competition. 3,000 squares, 100 hours, and one big portrait. Not exactly Nan's quill, does it? Stay tuned.
on your phone? Tweet I know, I'm yeah. always on my phone. Yeah. What do you do when you're not working? I'll show you. Okay, let's go. So this is how you relax? Pick your weapon, Fred. This one, uh, probably not for beginners. I'll take this guy. So how are we gonna do this? How simple, just hands, bullseye. No, I mean with the show. So we'll have news, Yep. weather, yep. traffic, sports, people, places, stories. Same show, just a little bit different. Can we throw the axes though still? Yeah. Let's go. St. John's Morning Show with Chrissy Holmes and Fred Hutton. Weekday mornings from 5.30 to 9 o'clock on CBC Radio 1, 88.5 FM, 6.40 AM. Welcome back. Used to freak me out when Chrissy would do that in the studio, i got to say. <laughs> now, they aren't your grandmother's quilts. In fact, Corey Follett's quilting studio is downright cool and modern. The CBC's Mark Cumby swung by to talk modern-day quilting and Barbara Streisand. Uh, starting this, it was always meant to be a hobby. Um, and then uh, last fall, I did my first farmer's market. And, uh, and as I was preparing to go to the farmer's market, I got asked if I could post pictures of what I would be selling. Because I was just making stuff and it was just stockpiling, you know, because I love doing what I'm doing. And, and I'd post pictures of it on my own Facebook page and, and Instagram and people would be really interested. And, and so someone had asked if I could create a page to show what would be at the farmer's market. It's kind of become a, a quasi business on the side, which is awesome. You know, some people call themselves traditional quilters, and that's, you know, a lot of what you'll see um, sort of in the Newfoundland heritage shops. And, and then, you know, there are, there's a whole group of quilters who align themselves with modern quilting. And then within both of those categories, um, you often, um, you'll see people who do portrait quilts. So the Barbra Streisand quilt, for example, I guess would fall under the category of a portrait quilt. Um, and it is based on a, uh, a pixelated version, um, you know, so, so what you see is over 3,000 one and a half inch unfinished squares when they're finished, you know, or one inch squares um, that make up Barbra Streisand and it's, a, you know, finished at five feet by seven feet and over 100 hours work went into her. The business aspect is definitely uh, a secondary aspect. So as much as I will continue to, you know, to work on pattern designing, as much as I will continue to take commission pieces, I also need to carve out time where it's just me down here playing with fabric and buying fabric and sewing it together and seeing what comes out of it at, on the other end. They're beautiful. Yeah, of course, got beautiful vision. Yeah. Mm. Works of art. <laughs> we'll be right back.
Let's meet our young athlete of the day. This is three-year-old Jack McDonald from Kellegrew. Jack may be small, but he has a big heart and a great love of being on the ice. Mm -hmm. He participates in the early bird skate and even enjoys giving uh, his dad a few lessons. Nice, <laughs> awesome job, Jack. Congratulations on being chosen as our young athlete of the day. The weather update is brought to you by Bell Tone Hearing Service St. John's. Helping the world hear better. I was mentioned in Ryan Snodden after yesterday's show, so Carolyn's doing the show. I said, you do realize, Ryan, whenever Carolyn does the show, the weather improves. And <laughs> you talk about story. It's, it's true. It's you know, it's not bad. It's Your not track record too is, bad. It's yep. true. It's kind of a boring weather forecast because there's no storms or anything <laughs> on I the go. I think people will take it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I certainly will. <laughs> and just have a look at uh, the highs for today. This will show you uh, how lovely the day was in many areas. Uh, look at the West Coast. Daniels Harbor got up to seven degrees today. So mostly above zero all over uh, the province today. Day. And uh, those kinds of temperatures are going to be sticking around for the next few days for sure. Overnight tonight, we do have that uh, freezing drizzle advisory in effect from St. John's up through southeastern Labrador. So if you're heading out on the roads, if you're going to be driving at all, uh, it could get uh, kind of icy on the roads uh, tonight, but it should start to clear off in the morning. So overnight tonight, you could see that freezing drizzle here along the northeast coast of the island and down through Labrador. Some flurries uh, in western Labrador will start to uh, clear off overnight tonight. Temperatures uh, chilly overnight, but it will start to warm up in Labrador for all those folks who are taking part in uh, the Canes Quest. So Saturday, 4 p.m., we're looking at some nice temperatures. Uh, three degrees in St. John's as the high tomorrow. You can see that there's still a chance of those this freezing drizzle uh, in the northeastern parts of uh, the island tomorrow afternoon. And uh, so this is our picture for uh, tomorrow Above zero everywhere. West Coast looking great. Cornerbrook, six degrees. Mostly cloudy skies. Going to be windy, though. Gusts up to 60 into Labrador. Uh, scattered flurries kind of throughout the day for most of Labrador. Temperatures pretty mild around the freezing mark or above. So, uh, yeah, not great news for the folks who are really hoping for those cold, cold temperatures for the snowmobile race that's happening there over the next week or so. So Saturday night uh, into Sunday, we're looking at kind of similar conditions. Uh, it's more of the same. Uh, uh, more chance of a drizzle overnight on Sunday. Uh, that freezing drizzle as well will kind of linger because of this northeastern flow that's just it has its feet up on the desk and it's just sticking around for for a while for sure. So so Sunday we're looking at a very similar conditions to Saturday. We'll start to clear off in the east on Sunday evening. So temperatures still above zero on the island. Chance of drizzle in the morning, but mostly cloudy day expected for Sunday and in Labrador still around the freezing mark zero as the high in western Labrador with a chance of flurries and cloudy skies in eastern Labrador. Now, as we head into a Monday, this northeasterly flow is just continuing. It's just staying there. So that's going to mean a lot of patchy drizzle uh, over the next few days, mostly in the night times. The daytime, it should start to clear off. Uh, so Monday afternoon, what we're looking at here is that chance of drizzle, but temperatures still staying pretty mild in western uh, Newfoundland and in Labrador, cooling down a little bit in western Labrador, minus two as the high there with a chance of flurries. So as we get into the work week, you can see it's sort of more of the same uh, temperatures above zero at zero or above with some flurries. But just look at the West Coast. What a beautiful stretch of nice weather a mix of sun and cloud and all temperatures above zero. So quite, quite nice as they head into uh, the winter games uh, next week. I'm sure they're hoping for much more snow, though. Uh, so we'll see what that will bring. And in Labrador, you can see those folks who are taking part in the Canes Quest. Temperatures will start to go down as we begin the work week. Uh, minus 10 on Wednesday. So, uh, yeah, it will cool down a bit later in the week. Debbie. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Well, Saturday night at the Basilica in St. John's, over 125 musicians will put off a classical music concert. That's not unusual, except this time it'll be sung in Inuktitut. It is a project that's been a long time in the making, a few hundred years actually. It started when the Moravians brought classical European music to the Labrador coast over two centuries ago. Grow 
growing up and you know starting off my career as a younger woman I people would say oh you're an Inuk soprano so what kind of Inuk opera is there and I'd say well there you know not none that I know of It was in 2003 that I first uh, actually touched the music. I had known about it for a long time. And uh, a friend of mine took me up the coast and introduced me to some of the musicians. We went up in the choir loft in Nain and pulled out a box. And uh, there were these absolutely priceless manuscripts, some of them 200 years old. I couldn't believe it. This classical music from Labrador uh, that the Moravian missionaries brought hundreds of years ago um, and the Labrador Inuit translated into their language, changed it, kind of made it their own. Well, I think the most important thing it tells us is the power of, uh, of the, the Inuit identity to take something that was fundamentally foreign, that was imposed on them, and yet, at the same time, they made into something very much their own. To have the privilege and the honor of learning this and singing it and sharing it is a dream come true for me. Wow. Yeah, wow <laughs> indeed. Now that show starts at 8 at the Basilica. It features the Newfoundland Symphony Orchestra, the voices of Lady Cove and Newman Sound Choirs, and as you just heard, Inuk singer Deantha Edmonds. Now Deantha says by preparing for this concert, she feels a lot closer to her father, who passed away just before Christmas. He grew up in Hopedale, and he would sing in Inuktitut, German, and English. Now if you want a pair of tickets for tomorrow night's show, send me a tweet at Anthony Germain. Here's the question. First correct answer wins. Lady Cove and Newman Sound aren't just choirs, they're also actual places in Newfoundland. Tweet me where in Newfoundland Lady Cove and Newman Sound are located, and the first right answer wins the tickets. And I'll give you a call right after here and now is over tonight. In national and international news tonight, a hidden camera investigation into how the country's largest telecom gets you to buy it has prompted Bell Canada to apologize. To get the real deal on door-to-door -door sales tactics, our colleagues at Marketplace and Go Public did something never done in Canada's telecom industry. They managed to get a CBC journalist hired in the field. Erica Johnson has the story. One, two, three. Yes. First one's in the field. First one a pep talk before sales reps fan out to Toronto area neighborhoods, subcontracted by Bell to pitch five TV and internet. Bell offers blazing fast internet and industry leading security features, all on Canada's largest fiber optic network. For seven days and nights, our producer filmed wearing hidden cameras. Hi there, how are you today? Over and over, sales reps made misleading promises, like this one on price. So this price is an ongoing price in forever. In fact, there's no such thing as a guaranteed price. Bell can <laughs> increase it, but they weren't trained to tell customers that. So it's called an ongoing price. Your forever price, your, the maximum price Bell can yeah. ever charge you. Gary Gemus says he was guaranteed a monthly price at the door, so he signed up. When his bill increased, he says a Bell customer service rep told him he should have read the contract. You can't just put the responsibility just on the consumer, because the consumer is relying on a Bell representative. Back on the front porch, salespeople misled about promo prices, fiber optics, and internet speeds. What Bell is promising you guys is this. The minimum you guys receive across any of your devices, it's 50. That is the minimum. But speeds can't be guaranteed. The man who runs this sales team, Mohammed Abdelhadi, won't give us an interview. So we pay him a visit. Do you have a minute to answer a few questions about your operation? Uh, just talk to Bell. Why are you training your salespeople to mislead people at the door? Talk to Bell, thank you very much. 
We'd like to talk to Bell, but instead, the telecom giant sends a statement saying, the examples of the sales practices you provided are in no way aligned with Bell's commitment to providing the best customer experience possible. We apologize to anyone who may have been adversely affected by this conduct. So I'm actually stopping by on behalf of Bell Canada. Bell has also severed ties with the company who hired these reps for breaching policies. Well, now to the U.S., where Donald Trump added to concerns over new tariffs on steel and aluminum imports today by suggesting a trade war would be good for the United States. Build our steel industry back. And we'll His comment comes after he announced yesterday a 25% tariff on foreign steel and 10% on aluminum. This morning, Trump tweeted, when a country is losing many billions of dollars on trade with virtually every country it does business with, trade wars are good and easy to win. Canada is the largest exporter of steel to the U.S., accounting for 16 percent of U.S. imports. Well, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says the U.S. has a $2 billion surplus on steel with Canada, and he has made it clear to President Trump that Canada would not accept such tariffs. I've spoken a number of times directly with the president on this issue, highlighting the integrated nature of the North American steel and aluminum market, uh, the highlighting and reminding him of the close uh, security cooperation that we have. Uh, I've highlighted that this is uh, not something we wanted to see, uh, and we will continue to engage uh, with all levels of the American administration in the coming days so that they understand that the, this proposal is unacceptable. And here's our viewer photo mm. of the day. Gorgeous sunset somewhere wow. in the province. Yeah, I believe that's uh, Magenta Cove. <laughs> <laughs> what is oh, that? They say red sky sailors delight. Yeah. That's a person down there, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, there's a person, person on the beach. And wow. that's not a beaver, I'll give you a Dan. hint. Yeah. Okay. This area is in for some really nice weather this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> Friday it is. Time to find out who's celebrating. Just have a look. Congratulations to Aubrey and Judy Legg of Blaketown on their 50th wedding anniversary yesterday. Happy 90th birthday to Daphne Melendi of Lumsden who celebrated February 27th. Celebrating 61 years together this Sunday, Gerald and Anne Waterman of Gander. 
Calvin and Annie Poole of St. Louis, Labrador celebrated their 50th anniversary February 26th. Happy 90th birthday to June Osmond. And a happy 93rd birthday to Charlie House who celebrated Monday. It was a golden anniversary on the 24th for Donna and Alan Fowler. Happy anniversary to Mark and Irene Goodyear of Lumsden celebrating 56 years together. And anniversary greetings to Harry and Shirley LeDrew of Lawrenceton, who celebrated their 61st wedding anniversary yesterday. Happy birthday to Anne Green in St. John's, formerly of Turks Cove, who celebrated her 90th birthday on February 27th. Wishing Betty and Wilbur Moss of Gander a happy 62nd anniversary. Their special day was last Sunday. Also celebrating last weekend, Phil and Joan Bull of Southern Bay, who enjoyed their 51st wedding anniversary on Saturday. And this couple enjoyed their golden anniversary on Saturday. Congratulations to Elwood and Lorena Blanchard of Meadows. Happy 50th wedding anniversary as well to John and Irene Hackett of Terrenceville. Congratulations to Dawn and Louise Sweetapple of Glovertown South, who celebrated their 68th wedding anniversary this Wednesday. Birthday wishes to Stella Sampson in Grand Falls, Windsor, celebrating her 90th birthday this coming Sunday. Happy 90th birthday as well to Florence Barrett, formerly of Southport Trinity Bay, now living in Gander. Congratulations to Josephine Mooney of St. John's, formerly of Brigus South. She celebrates her 93rd birthday this coming Monday. And a happy 53rd wedding anniversary to Eric and Lena Peach in Grand Bank. They celebrate tomorrow. Happy 93rd birthday today to Muriel Fowler of Chamberlain's. She now lives in St. John's. Best wishes to Violet Goodyear in Carmenville, who turned 93 years old February 26th. Happy 93rd birthday as well to Annie Norris from Beta Bird, now in Old Perlican. Happy 64 years of marriage to Ben and Mary Ryan, whose special day was yesterday. And a special birthday to tell you about. Happy birthday to Victor Baker in Lewisport, who will be 101 years old tomorrow. Happy birthday to Mary Genge Bowers, who turned 92 years of age yesterday. Loretta O'Toole celebrates her 90th birthday this coming Sunday. Annie Boland in Mount Pearl is celebrating her 92nd birthday today. Congratulations. And happy 50th anniversary to Leonard and Melvina Party in Buren. Happy 61st wedding anniversary to Kenneth and Ida Pierce of Fortune. Happy anniversary to Norman and Betty Perry, who will celebrate 59 years together this Sunday. Happy 90th birthday tomorrow to Ethel Pearl Masters of Swift Current Placentia Bay. Happy 91st birthday to Raymond Sears of St. John's. Birthday wishes to Captain Wallace Lodge of Catalina, who celebrates his 96th birthday on Monday the 5th. Congratulations to Lloyd and Bernice Wheaton on their 55th anniversary. Happy birthday to Dennis Dre of Dunville on his 96th birthday this coming Monday. And best wishes to Hoover and Sybil Evans, who are celebrating their 63rd wedding anniversary today. All right, here's another look at our viewer picture of the day. We did get some guesses as to where uh, this was taken. I didn't uh, guess it, but uh, I wouldn't mind visiting Dale there. Lake. Yes, beautiful. Picture. Sheila Hederson, thank you very much for sending that in. And yeah. Anthony? Yeah, on Twitter, uh, looking at my phone here, Shannon O'Keefe says, Deer Lake is the picking question. So, Shannon, congratulations. You got it. Unfortunately, there's no prize. <laughs> <laughs> Just playing is winning. <laughs> Have a great weekend, everyone. See you next week. Bye Good night. Now.